my colleagues in thanking Senator Murkowski. Uh, Senator, you've done a wonderful job as chairman of this committee. Uh, I don't care if Joe Manchin is taking over nominally in my heart, you'll always be the chair of the committee. Uh, uh, I, I really appreciate the work that you've done. Uh, Governor, welcome. Uh, and I want to touch on a couple of things rather quickly. Uh, my dear friend, the senator from Louisiana, talked about natural gas prices and the effect on increases of those prices. The most serious threat to the domestic price of natural gas is unfettered exports. And under the Natural Gas Act, as you talked earlier in your testimony, uh, you have to find a, a public interest, make a public interest finding. And I hope as you do that analysis, because we now have applications for the last time I looked, more than half of the domestic production of natural gas for export. That cannot do anything but drive the price up as it does it as it has in other places in the world. So I hope that you will uh, have your staff do really good uh, elasticity studies about the effect of those additional uh, export capacities on domestic prices. That's That's got to be part of the analysis. If that isn't public interest, I don't know what is. Will you commit to me to looking at that aspect when you're looking at these applications? Certainly in the balancing test that's required under the Natural Gas Act, that would be one of the things we would look at. Thank you. Uh, We've talked about wind and wind power. Offshore wind is one of the great, uh, greatest potential energy sources. Uh, and the, the real frontier is floating uh, where the uh, continental shelf is too deep. Uh, so, and I want to mention that the, the leading research on, on floating offshore wind technology is being done at the University of Maine at Orono. They've been working with the department over the past five years on the Aquaventus project. I, commend that to you because if we're going to tap uh, the higher capacity factor and the enormous potential uh, for offshore wind, it's going to have to be in deeper water. Uh, and that means uh, some kind of floating uh, technology, as you mentioned. So I would like to invite you uh, to the uh, composites lab at the university to see the amazing work that's being done up there in, uh, in this field. I would very much like to come and see that. Uh, Next issue, uh, somebody asked me my priorities on uh, energy, and I said it's storage, storage, and number three is storage. Uh, there's research money in the in the bill that we just passed. There is no more important work that that you can be doing. And and the example is uh, someone earlier mentioned the revolution in uh, energy production uh, by hydrofracking, which in fact was invented in large measure because of support from research funds at the Department of Energy. So uh, if we can break through with cost-effective storage, uh, that really opens uh, the door to full electrification and full renewable uh, electrification. So I hope that's an emphasis that you will maintain in your work at the, at the department. It is, and you may be aware that, um, Vice, that President Biden has um, established a desire to create some earth shots, as he called them, sort of like the sun shot that, uh, that was previously done that brought down the price of solar. And one of those earth shots is to reduce the cost of utility scale battery storage by 90%. Well, that's, uh, that, that's where we need to go. And, and once that happens, then uh, uh, technologies that are based upon interruptible sources like wind and solar uh, essentially become baseload, and uh, that's really uh, uh, crucial. Uh, a final point I wanted to touch on, and, and I know Senator Cortez Masto is going to be following me, is uh, nuclear waste disposal. Uh, I live about 20 miles from a, uh, a nuclear uh, plant that was closed about 15 years ago. Uh, we have what amounts to a high-level nuclear waste site uh, on the coast of Maine. And uh, it's because of a 70-year unmet promise by the federal government uh, to deal with nuclear waste. I believe that uh, nuclear uh, development has a, has a low fossil, I mean, a low carbon future in this country, but I'm reluctant to support significant new development until we uh, meet that promise. So I hope that's something that you will uh, pay attention to. I know Senator Cortez Masto is going to steer you away from Yucca Mountain, but we really do have to be uh, honest with ourselves about the fact that what we have now are I don't know how many, maybe 100 effective high-level nuclear sites scattered around the country, 
and that's not a good, that's not a safe from national security or from an environmental point of view. I, I agree with you. It is a very sticky um, situation, and clearly we have to maybe look at what the Blue Ribbon Commission did on this, which was to engage in some consensus, site-based consensus um, strategies that allow us to determine where that waste should go. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Congratulations on your nomination, and uh, certainly look forward to, to working with you. Thank you, Senator.